So at this point in time, uh, we are going to welcome a friend of this house, Steve Backlund. We are so excited to have Steve with us this morning. Please welcome Steve as he comes forward. Bless you, Steve. Bless you. Bless you, yeah. Wow, good morning. Whew. What a treat it is to be here. Anybody else uh, <clears throat> like that worship? Yeah. My, oh my. Yeah. This California guy comes to New Jersey and gets rocked. <laughs> my, thank you so much. Thank you, King of Kings, for what you, um, what you're going after. So good to be with Urban Mission as well. This weekend, we've had such a, a great time and, and just sensing that this meeting today is a super, well, it's this, this goes without saying, this is a supernatural meeting. Yeah. How many know church is supernatural? But this is a meeting that the Lord has ordained and whether people watching online or people here, God has brought us together for a divine appointment. And there's a lot that has already happened in this meeting. Someone say amen to that. It's already happened. But it's, it's increasing. It's increasing. And we serve a God of increase. We, we serve a God who... Uh, he, he's not confounded by what's going on in the world. <laughs> we have a ministry of hope, Igniting Hope Ministries, and my wife and I, and we sense the Lord said to us, Stephen, Wendy, I give you permission to be hopeless about anything I am hopeless about. ha. <laughs> And never once have we prayed and you know, said, God, are you hopeless? Never once have we heard yes. We are stumped here in heaven. This is so bad that even prayer is pointless. We've never heard that. Anyhow, I'll introduce myself a little more in a moment. But boy, I, I got a couple words I want to release. I want to release this word over King of Kings. And, and just uh, what I'm sensing that the Lord is saying to this house and I'm hearing this, that King of Kings is an exporter of cutting-edge prayer. An exporter of cutting-edge prayer. And I'm hearing that, I got to be in the pre-service prayer meeting, and, and, and that, that the Lord is, is, is already doing it, but he's going to take you to a new level in prayer. There's a new thing. You know, it's interesting that in the natural with war that we don't fight with bow and arrows anymore. You know, that there, there's bombs that, that literally can be launched from hundreds of miles away. It can go into a doorway of a house. And how many of you know that uh, in, it, even in the spiritual, God's increasing us? It, we, what, what, what worked 100 years ago, God's got greater things right now. He's got, say, greater things. Greater things. And then I'm hearing that there's a whole new uh, wave of prayer coming on this house. And I'm hearing that there's uh, spiritual experimenters in prayer in this house. And, and, and I, that there's going to be creative different kinds of prayer. And that there's going to be experimentation. And then it's going to be exported to the nations for a whole new prayer movement. Woohoo! Ha <laughs> ha. One of the churches I pastored, I pastored a church in Northern California. We had all kinds of prayer meetings. Man, I mean, we had pre-service prayer meetings, governmental prayer meetings, soaking prayer meetings, harp and bowl prayer meetings. We even had laughter prayer meetings where we just had prayer meetings and laughed at lives. You know, it says in Psalm 2-4, he who sits in the heavens laughs. You know, and, and so he's laughing. The context is he's laughing what his enemies are saying and planning. And so there's a creativity that, that is, is here. 
And, and I just say thank you, Father, for, uh, and, and the Lord's bringing, even the people who are coming, whoo, man, oh, man. Each one's going to even deposit one aspect of prayer that somebody's going to see. Somebody's going to see. And here's what I'm hearing for um, Urban Mission. We've got some radicals here on the front. You know, these guys, these guys. I've hung out with them a few times. <laughs> they're some of the Christians my mom warned me about. <laughs> yeah, they make me a little nervous. <laughs> but I was hearing over uh, Urban Mission... That, that the number four is a key number. And, and even, even in um, Bible numerology and the number four and what it means, there's going to be something that's going to be discovered there. And there's going to be verses that, uh, where there's four. You know, it's fascinating. Like uh, the man, they broke through the roof. The guy had four friends. Yeah, four lepers in the Old Testament said, hey, you know, we're going to die anyway. Why, why don't we just go over to the, you know, the enemy's camp? <laughs> four Gospels. Mm -hmm. And I see the Lord just leading you in this next season through the number four. Yeah, even chapter four, verse fours of the Bible. Even uh, addresses that have four in it. ha. <laughs> Even someone who's 44 years old, that there's going to be there's there's going to be that and um, and I just see that uh, uh, I just see four key areas too of influence. I saw like four rivers coming out of uh, uh, urban mission where there, there's going to be like four areas of focus that you really feel that God's on, and, and that's going to be clarified in in a great way. So, yeah, we say, we say thank you for that. Thank you for these churches here. Thank you for the power of the church. Yes. Even with issues, the church is the greatest organism on the planet. And you know what Jesus said? You know, if Jesus gave a, a prophetic word, how many of you know it was probably a good word? Here, here's what Jesus prophesied. I will build my church and, and the gates of hell will not prevail. Just say the gates of hell will not prevail. Say it again. Say it louder. Let's uh, here, here's let's let's laugh at this lie right here, because laughter is a powerful spiritual weapon that disempowers lies that we believe. So let's laugh at this. The gates of hell have prevailed against the church in America. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't mean we're not concerned about things. It doesn't mean we don't grieve about things. It doesn't mean we don't stand up for things. But we believe. Man, I'll tell you, the, the worship today, whew, I'm still, man, I thought I, thought I was going to have my own Enoch experience here. Um, yes. Yeah, Steve went to New Jersey and was no more. And I'm trying to fly out of here today. I'm trying, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to beat this storm today. I'm gonna, yeah. What we say? By his stripes we are healed. Man, we sang that today. By his nail pierced hands we're free. By his blood we're washed clean. Man. Power of sin is broken. Yeah. Oh, that, was, that was good. And then, then we sang this. This was good. It says, when I lift my voice and shout, every wall comes crashing down. Yeah. Wow. When I open up my mouth, miracles start breaking out. Wow, man. I, I said that this morning. 
Woo! Man, that, that got me. That really got me. I, I shared yesterday, I used to get frustrated with worship leaders because they would have me say the same phrase over and over again. And then I felt like the Lord said, Steve, that's the only way I can get you to say it. The only way I can get you to say something full of faith is if you're singing it. Because mm-hmm. when you're not under the anointing, all you use your words for is just to describe your life. But I want to get you to use your words to change your life. I want you to get, I want, I'm going to get you to say it without music. Because <laughs> both the devil and God need our words to accomplish their will. If something's going to happen, something was spoken. If something has happened, something was spoken. Holy Spirit hovering over a face of deep, waiting for something to work with. <laughs> I'm ready. Yes. Yeah, Holy Spirit, I'm ready. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, waiting. <laughs> then God said, let there be light. It's just, uh, I've got this got a, some product books out there. I got this declaration clicker. And this is, I, I carry this with me. I'm on, I'm on 72 faith declarations today. Matter of fact, I did so many in, in worship, I was just clicking away. I, by his stripes, I'm healed. Click, click, click. <laughs> and my goal is to make at least 100 faith declarations a day without music. I mean, music helps. But you can't change your life without changing how you talk. And we're people of faith. Just say, I'm a person of faith. Why don't you say this? I'm in a season of breakthrough. Breakthrough in my emotions. Breakthrough in my relationships. Breakthrough in my finances. Breakthrough in my influence. My prayers for America are working. You know what I do is I challenge people, do, a, do an experiment. I'm a spiritual experimenter. I mean, there's no progress unless someone's trying something new. I... I I challenge you to make a hundred faith declarations at least for a month and see what happens every day. Mm -hmm. Yep. Let's try it. That will be dangerous to mediocrity, dangerous to survivalism, dangerous to pessimism. (laughs) We got got those. And then I wrote a book called Declarations Unlocking Your Future includes 30 biblical reasons for making declarations. And I know this is a declaring house. Man, this is a real declaring house. <laughs> you guys are declaring, decreeing. And, and um, this uh, 30 biblical reasons, it's biblical. I mean, the worlds were created with a declaration. Jesus started his ministry in Luke 4 with a declaration. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me. Preach good news to the poor. Proclaim liberty to the captives. Mm -hmm. He said that even before he started his ministry. He was declaring what he was going to do before he did it. Wow. Yep. When I just, uh, you know, just uh, this, right. I mean, I just love what's on. Is it? Carolyn or Carolyn? Yeah, Carolyn, man. I'll tell you, that book, it kind of makes me nervous to give you that book because you're, I mean, you're all, you're all ready. Yeah, I know. That's a, wrote another book called You're Crazy If You Don't Talk to Yourself. Mm-hmm. I'd validate some people in the room. <laughs> you're crazy if you don't talk to yourself. 
It doesn't say, let the weak wait for someone else to come up to you and say you're strong. Mm -mm. Let the weak say, I am strong. Psalm 103, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Who's he talking to? Self. Hey, soul, bless the Lord. And forget not his benefits. Who's he talking to? Yep. Who heals all my diseases. Forgives all my iniquities. Mm. Yep, all. Wow, all. Man, that's all. It must mean all. All right. I'm just fired up. Just, uh, <laughs> um, I'm on staff at Bethel Church, Redding, California. We have our own ministry called Igniting Hope Ministries. My wife and I, I'll tell you my story today. And, um, and we have a, a mandate to ignite hope. That's our assignment. Because there's no hopeless circumstances. There's just people who do not have hope. Once people get true hope, circumstances cannot stay the same. Hope's an unstoppable force. My couple of definitions of hope. One is that hope is the belief that the future will be better than the present. And I have the power to help make it so. Hope is the belief that the future will be better than the present. And I have the power to help make it so. For all of my life, there's always been reasons why I should be pessimistic about the future. All my life. There's always a reason to be pessimistic. And, and, and it's risky to get your hopes up. Hope is risky business. Because if I get my hopes up, I risk being disappointed again. Whoo, it's risky. Mm -hmm. I've had certain times in my life, nope, I'm not, uh-uh. Mm -mm. It's like Gideon, Judges 6. Hey, Gideon, it's you. Lord's with you, mighty man of valor. He said, uh-uh. Mm -mm. I'm not receiving that word. <laughs> no, boop. Mm -mm. Lord's with us. Why has all this happened? God's abandoned us. It's too late. But he finally opened up. Because once you, you just open up, whew, I'm going to take the risk to get my hopes up again. I mean, there's two ways to live. You can live a hopeless life and never be disappointed. Someone say, boo, boo. Or you can live a hope-filled life with occasional disappointment. I choose that. By the way, the Lord's healing brokenheartedness this morning. He's healing people who have been disappointed. He's healing people who are fearful. And I get it if you're fearful of getting your hopes up. He's, he's healing that today. Yeah. It's happening. The anointing heals the brokenhearted. The brokenness that's in our heart because of things that didn't happen the way we thought they were going to happen. But it's time where God's people are rising up. Yeah. Hope is an overall optimistic attitude about the future based on the goodness and promises of God. Right. Hope is an overall optimistic attitude about the future based on the goodness and promises of God. My future is as bright as the promises of God. There's a difference between faith and hope. I remember I was preaching with my wife once, and, and she's a revelatory Holy Spirit woman. I never know what she's going to be saying. She's, she's, I mean, we preach together a lot. She's over there arcing and sparking, you know, in that spirit. Yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> and she said this. She said, faith without hope is weird. 
If you're a faith person without hope, you're just weird. And so we, we unpack that. And I'll say it this way. If we're a faith person without hope, we're unhealthy. Now here's my overly simplistic difference between faith and hope. Faith is very specific. Hope is more general. Faith says, God's going to do this. Hope says, I don't know what God's going to do, but good things are coming. Good things are coming. Mm -hmm. Faith says, this prayer is going to be answered. Hope says, even while I'm waiting for that prayer to be answered, I'm going to thrive. And even if that prayer isn't answered, I'm going to thrive. Faith people without hope tend to put all their eggs in one basket and say, if that doesn't happen, it's all over. If I don't have this, it's all over. Mm -hmm. Hope people say, if that doesn't happen, something better is coming. Faith person says, I'm getting married. Hope says, even if I don't get married, I'm going to thrive. And by the way, if you have hope and you start thriving before the promise, it increases the likelihood of the promise happening. Oh, it says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Woohoo! Ha <laughs> ha! So, I want, I, I, by the way, I, I want faith. There's times where we stand. I mean, I get that. I mean, there's times where we just say, you know what? Well, I'm not letting go of that thing. But, but I believe this, that in, at least in my own life, I, I underemphasized hope. I underemphasize hope. In Romans 4.18, it says about Abram, against all hope. In hope, Abraham believed and became the father of many nations. So he put the promise, he's going to be a father of many nations, into the soil of hope. Against all hope, in hope, he believed. He put it in the soil of that. And it just... My own journey to get hope, I'll just share my story because my story is my message. And I grew up north coast of California, redwood tree country. My father was a redwood tree timber faller. I did not know Jesus. As a boy, met Wendy when I was a senior in high school. She was a junior. Um, she, was, uh, she was not a Christian either. I graduated high school, actually became a hippie had hair, and we were seeking and searching and did things hippies did, ha <laughs> and tried to fill the vacuum in my heart, all kinds of stuff, but nothing lasted, and by the way, someone's watching this, whether it's online or whatever, who doesn't know Jesus, who's searching, and one of the prayers I prayed was, God, if you're real, show yourself to me. That's a good prayer. Someone's praying that out there. If you're real, show yourself. Yep. Mm -hmm. and, and that's my prayer. And, and we met Jesus. And uh, someone say yay. yay. And, and we found out this. There's no high like the most high. Yep. No high like the most high. <laughs> and so we, we're in an Assembly of God church, North Coast, California, near Eureka. And get saved and start going there and um, my belief system at that time was if that I went to church and didn't feel saved then I didn't believe I was saved and if they gave the altar call to be saved again I would go up and get saved again haha <laughs> then the Lord said Steve I've got good news for you you are saved even when you don't feel saved I go wow that's amazing that's amazing. I thought feelings were the highest indicator of truth there was. Let's just laugh at that. 
<laughs> You're righteous even if you don't feel righteous. You're powerful even if you don't feel powerful. <laughs> you have a sound mind even if you don't feel like you have a sound mind. Uh-huh. Ooh, there, there's some, someone's going to go to the headwaters of that thing right there. Uh-huh. Even after hearing that, I would go to church not feeling saved, not believing I was saved. I'd want to go up there so bad for the altar call, and the Lord said, Steve, do not go up there. <laughs> Don't go up there. But Lord, I know if I go up there, I'll feel better. I'll get this spirit of heaviness off me. So I'm going to show you how to get that heaviness off you. It's not by doing something different. It's by believing something different. My wife wrote a book called Victorious Emotions, and she very succinctly says, if you want a different emotion, you need a different belief. Ouch. But what a truth. What a truth. Most pessimism, most discouragement, most depression... Most spirits of heaviness result from believing lies. So it was, we stayed in that church for 15 years. I was on staff for about 13 of those years. Um, and it was a season of living in Romans 12.1, where it says to give your bodies as a living sacrifice to the Lord. You know, which is your reasonable service. And basically what that Romans 12, 1 says is it's surrendering everything to the Lord. It's a sacrifice. Learning how to sacrifice your will. Not my will be done, but your will be done. It's learning how to do things God's way. I've never ever done anything God's way and said I wish I wouldn't have done it God's way. How I many you know God's ways are perfect? We at Wendy and I had to learn how to do our relationship God's way. Our relationship was built on sand, the world ways, and had to get purity under it, how to, how to live that way. And, I mean, I, and just surrendering and say, God, I want to do it your way, how to treat people, how, how, to, how to walk in integrity. All of those things, learning, learning God's ways. And, and it was powerful and, and needed. And, and by the way, someone who's watching right now, the Lord... It's just releasing grace over you to do it God's way. And somebody, I mean, there, there was times where I had to pray the prayer, God, make me willing. <laughs> I had struggles. I don't know if I can do this. God, make me willing. I, I, I lay it down again. I lay what I want to do. I lay my self-will down. It's the season we heard what Isaiah heard in Isaiah 6 when Isaiah had an encounter. By the way, it started out, Isaiah 6, In the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Uzziah was king for 52 years. He died in a, in a time of national uncertainty. A prophet, a young prophet named Isaiah saw the Lord. It changed everything. All through the nation right now, in national uncertainty, there are people who are seeing the Lord high and lifted up. There's young prophets, there's old prophets, there's prophetesses seeing the Lord. And Isaiah saw the Lord. And we're still talking about him 2,700 years later. Somebody, and I dare to believe somebody is going to see the Lord, and someone's 2,700 years from now is going to be talking about somebody who saw the Lord in 2021. Mm -hmm. Someone say, I, I believe that. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. yeah, Jesus may come back, before, but he may not. I don't know. I, I want to live in such a way I'm ready every day, but I'm living in such a way I'm going to have a 3,000, 4,000 year vision. Of influence. But he heard, who will go for us? <laughs> and he said, here am I, send me. Why don't you say that? Here am I, send me. 
Yeah. We say it again, Lord. We say it again. Yeah. What, 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 whatever you need. I, I don't have idea. None of us know where this thing's going. None of us know what we're being raised up for. That's one of the wonders of service. I don't know. I, I just say, here am I sitting. I mean, David's out with his sheep in the field. He's got no idea where that thing's going. He's not thinking of Goliath. He's not thinking of sheep. He's just worshiping. I mean, he's thinking of sheep. He's not thinking about, yeah, thinking about excuse me, he's not thinking about being king. He's just out there worshiping and taking care of sheep and playing with slingshots. This thing's going bigger than you know. What God's raising you up for, it's bigger than you know. Just say, it's bigger than I know. And so that's what Wendy and I, we just said here, we just ran the altars, here we are, send us, and and, and just, God doesn't need our ability, he just needs our availability. So in, after 15 years, in 1991, the Lord sent us out to pastor a church. We became senior pastors of a church in the middle of the Nevada desert in a place called Round Mountain, Nevada. Let's laugh at that, by the way. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. Rural. I mean, this is Rural. Uh, it's illogical to go out there, <clears throat> but how many of you know God's not always logical? How many of you know that in our faith journey, we're going to do things that aren't financially logical, that aren't logical to, to climb ladders of success? <laughs> and, and so we stayed out there 10 years. Now, we're in the middle of the desert, four hours from Reno, four hours from Vegas. And how many of you know God likes to send people to deserts to teach them how to repent? <laughs> yep. Now, one of the best definitions of repentance is to change the way you think. And we didn't know, but God says, I'm going to change the way you think out here in the desert. And when I say the Lord said to us, here's what I mean. We didn't hear an audible voice. These are conclusions that we made based on prayer, meditation, scripture, still small voice. These are the conclusions in our dialogue with, with, with God. And, and we, we basically heard, Stephen, Wendy, I love your heart for Romans 12, 1, to sacrifice and surrender. But if you're going to see transformation, I need to move you into Romans 12, 2. <laughs> Romans 12, 2 says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and excellent and perfect will of God. So transformation doesn't come from surrendering your heart. It comes from surrendering your beliefs. We, we were under the mindset that the reason we weren't seeing breakthrough and transformation is because we hadn't surrendered our heart enough or hadn't sacrificed enough. Thinking there's got to be one more thing. We've got to surrender one more sin, one more, you know, sacrifice more money, more food, more dreams. Then we'll have breakthrough. And Wendy's in that mindset. God, I give you my heart. She's in prayer and and she tells her, I guess I can't even give you my heart. Just take my heart. And she hears this, Wendy, I have your heart. Now I need your mind. <laughs> Whew. I need your mind. And we found this out. Surrendering our beliefs is more challenging often than surrendering our heart. The Lord asks, Wendy, can you surrender the beliefs that you're shy inadequate, and can't speak well in front of others. Can you surrender those beliefs? <clears throat> and she says, but that's who I am. Ha <laughs> ha. And she hears this. That's not who you are. It's just who you've become. That's not who you are. The only reason, because 
what we, what we realized is that we renewed our minds more with our past experience and our feelings and what he was saying. Because mind renewal on one level is just whatever you come into agreement with. I agree I'm not powerful. I agree I'm shy. I agree I don't have the gift of healing. And, and, and what happens is that we, because current mind renewal creates future experience. Whatever I renew my mind with today will transform my tomorrow. He, he asked me, Steve, can you, can you surrender the beliefs that you're less than other leaders? And can you surrender the belief that there's something uniquely wrong with you? Let's laugh at that lie, by the way. Ha <laughs> ha. Ha ha. Can you say, well, Lord, it feels so true. There's something uniquely wrong with me. If it feels this true, does it mean it is true? He said, no. Feelings don't validate truth. They just validate what you believe to be true. Why don't you turn to your neighbor and say, I think this message is just for you. <laughs> so man, we're getting rocked out there. Man, we're just man, we're out we're out here to change the world. Lord says, I'm I'm gonna change you. I'm gonna change you, that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> man. So he showed us John 8.32, the truth will make you free. So every area of our life where we believe truth in, we get free. Every area of our life where we believe lies, we're not free. And so, I mean, first, I believe truth, I get free first in my emotions, then I get free in my circumstances. But if I believe lies, I first get restricted in my emotions, and then I get restricted in my experience. So the battle's really between lies and truth. I'm not really a devil-focused Christian, and I know there's times where we got to deal with the devil, and I know there's people who've got great deliverance ministries, which is needed. But the devil's not our biggest problem. If I believe truth, I'm free, and if I'm free, it doesn't sound like the devil's bugging me very much. Even to put on the full armor of God in Ephesians 6, you've got to believe something to get those pieces on. Right. So, the battles between lies and truth. So, the question is, how do we know for believing a lie? That's the question. Because the nature of deception is, is that we don't know we're deceived. Once we know we're deceived, we're no longer deceived. <laughs> kind of makes sense. I was reading a book by a guy named Francis Frangipan called The Three Battlegrounds. And one of the battlegrounds is the mind. And he said something that just it changed my life. Matter, matter of fact, our whole ministry, Igniting Hope Ministry, came out of this. He said, every area of your life that doesn't glisten with hope, say glisten with hope, Every area of your life that doesn't glisten with hope means you're believing a lie, and that area is a stronghold of the devil in your life. I'll say it again. Every area of your life that doesn't glisten with hope means you're believing a lie, and that area is a stronghold of the devil in your life. Now, I read that, I close the book, I become instantly discouraged. Because I'm trying to find one area where I got hope. I, I can't find one, let them listen. Let me tell you all the areas at that time that were telling me I was a failure. This was not a time to, you know, change how I believe. I, I, but it wasn't a convenient time. Let's laugh at all these things that were telling me I was a failure. I had a non-successful car. <laughs> <laughs> I had a non-successful bank account and salary. <laughs> I 
my hair was starting to get (laughs) non-successful. I had a non-successful church size. (laughs) My home, which was a single wide old trailer sitting next to the church called the Parsonage, was not successful. It was in that season I'm reading this. Every area doesn't glisten with hope means you're believing a lie. That area is a stronghold of the devil in your life. Yeah, and then I prayed a dumb prayer. Oh God, would you show me every lie that I'm believing? Should not have prayed that. Should have prayed, Lord, show me 10% of the lies I'm believing. Because I got a revelation, almost everything I believed in my life was a lie, and I was pastoring a church. (laughs) I had good doctrine, but bad beliefs. We need good doctrine. We need good doctrine. I mean, Jesus is God. How many of you know if you don't get that right, you got a problem? (laughs) The authority of Scripture. Salvation is by grace through faith alone, not of works. That's good doctrine, and there's so many others. But, I mean, you know, we can have good Bible doctrine and still be believing lies and still be filled with pessimism, victim mindsets, unworthiness, disappointment, worry, insecurity, you know, all of that. And, and so as, as you beginning to understand all right, I need to go after how I'm thinking. And I began to understand that that hope, and I'll I'll share a verse here that will support that quote. I began to understand that my hope level was the indicator of whether I was believing truth or lies. So a lack of hope was like a check engine light on a car. I don't get... I don't get condemned when I see my check engine light come on. I don't say I'm a bad person. That, no, I'm just it's great information. I don't get condemned if I don't have hope. But it's just it's that's the problem. And so he showed me Romans 15, 13, where it says now, say now, now. wins now. Now, now. yeah. It's, okay, right. Mm-hmm. Now may the God of hope fill you. When? Now. Now? now? Okay, I mean. Uh, when the coronavirus is over? No, no now. Uh, when, when political uh, division's over? No. No, no, now. Wow, now. When you overcome that problem in your life? No. When you're, all your family members are doing what you think they should be doing? No. Oh, no, oh, it's now. We don't wait till the, It's now. No. Now may the God of hope fill you <laughs> with all joy and peace. Now, Hope's got two buddies who hang out with him. One's called all joy, the other's called peace. Now, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. Say, in believing. Which, that's the key verse, that's the key phrase in the verse. He's going to fill you in believing. So the moment I believe truth is the moment I start getting filled I'm already filled in my spirit. My soul starts getting filled. My mind, my will, and my emotions. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Ha, 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 ha. Uh-huh. I believe truth. I start getting filled. Get filled a little more. Start believing more stuff. Mm-hmm, man. By his stripes, I'm healed. Ooh, I, buy, I heard that this morning. Faith comes by hearing. I got excited about that. When I open my mouth, miracles I go and just uh, <laughs> get filled. It didn't, I get filled, and it comes up to my eyes. Just what my eyes, my, oh God, I get so filled, I start seeing everything differently. Oh, I start seeing, yeah. I, hey, I see me differently. Hey, I'm actually starting to kind of like me. <laughs> I mean, I, I think I can do this. I think I'm important. Uh, Hey, hey, I start seeing people differently. I think God can even use them. (laughs) I think they're not who their past says they are. Ah, yeah, in my nation. 
And so, because increasing hope is the evidence we're renewing our mind with truth instead of lies. Decreasing hope is the evidence we're renewing our mind with lies instead of truth. That changed my life. That changed my life. Because I made my lack of hope a bigger enemy to me than anything the devil was doing. I started re, repositioning my spiritual warfare guns at my own beliefs. I mean, 2 Corinthians 10, 4, and 5 says, The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty in God to the pulling down of strongholds. We demolish arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, taking every thought. Every th How many thoughts? Every thought. Now, what the thoughts that we take captive, one of the main thoughts we take captive are thoughts that don't have hope. The most quoted spiritual warfare passage in the Bible is not talking about regional demonic principalities. And I'm not discounting that, that, there, that, that there's an existence of that, but it, that verse is talking about strongholds in our own mind. You know why it's called a stronghold? Because it has a stronghold. It kind of makes sense. <laughs> By the way, and I'm going to wrap this up here. Whatever our strongholds are, we're constantly looking for proof to confirm what we already believe is true. Strongholds can be negative and positive, by the way. You can have a hope stronghold. You can have a victim mindset stronghold. You can have a joy stronghold. You can have a pessimism stronghold. And like if I have a stronghold that I don't have favor, that I'm a person with little favor. By the way, let's just laugh at this lie. You are a person with little favor. <laughs> if I have that stronghold, then I'm constantly looking for not ha where I don't have favor. I won't even see where I, I do. And so this whole thing about Hope, igniting hope, that our, our hope level is the indicator of whether we're believing lies or truth. I, I sense this morning, and I know that in this room and people who are watching online, there are powerful people watching. There's powerful people here. I mean, we're all powerful. Just say, I'm powerful. I'm powerful. Because I am who God says I am, not who my past says I am. The more I agree with who God says I am, the more it's going to manifest. The more I'll renew my mind that I'm powerful, the more I'll experience power. <laughs> we believe and then see. Not see and then believe. It's the way the kingdom works. We don't deny what's going on. We don't deny the facts of problems. We just don't get our beliefs out of it. We believe in truths higher than the facts. But I, I, I see something happening today in this meeting right now. God is releasing an impartation of hope to people. He's healing the brokenhearted and and. There's people in the room, you've already, you've already manifested a lot of kingdom advancement. You've all, God's already used you in an incredible way. But I want to tell you this. I want to tell you this, that you ain't seen nothing yet. And I want to tell you this, that, that there's a hope thing that's getting in you. There's a hope thing. The, 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 the God's grace is on you to hope again. God's grace is on you to hope higher. Hope is the belief that the future will be better than the present, and I have the power to help make it so. Hope is tied to vision. Without a vision, the people perish. 
There's others who, you're at the beginning of your journey and the devil's a liar. He's lied to you and says you're at a disadvantage, you're broken, you are not significant in the kingdom. But we, let's just laugh at that, by the way. Ha ha. I'm here to tell you good news. The gospel's good news. It's a new season for you. It's a new season for you. And in America right now, the Lord's raising people up all over this nation. God's clarifying assignments. And I believe after love, hope is the most powerful leadership quality there is. I believe that. I believe our hope level determines our influence level. He who has the most hope has the most influence. So, Father, thank you. Thank you for this, this time today. Thank you for a divine appointment. Thank you for revelation. Thank you for now. Now, may the God of hope fill you. Thank you, you're filling us now. Thank you for revelation of truth that's going to break off the lies in our lives. I just want to ask you today, if you... Uh, if you if you are in agreement with this message and you want the Holy Spirit to just take this message and bear much fruit, 30, 60, 100 fold, just stand to your feet just right now. Just stand to your feet. And as you stand today, God's grace, you're a magnet for His grace. You're a magnet for His grace. If you receive the message, just say, I receive it. I'll never be the same again. Something happened in me this morning. It was supernatural. It's going to increase. It's going to influence the nations. Amen, amen. Give the Lord a shout this morning. Woo, yeah. Woo, the walls are coming down. The walls are coming down. Yes. Here we go. Woo. Give him another shout. Yes. Yes. It's happening. It's happening. 